I've worked with a lot of couples who've talked to me about anger or felt guilty that they felt angry. I've also taught anger management class for many years. I actually wrote the uh, SOP on it at my previous job. But I find that there's a lot of misunderstanding about what anger is and if it's allowed ever to manifest or to be shown. And one of the first examples I like to show people are in the Bible when Jesus turned over the tables of the money changers. He was clearly angry. Was he out of control? I would say not. He did what his righteous anger caused him to do. So I'd like to use this video to help you understand a little bit more about what is anger? Is it ever acceptable? Yes. When is it acceptable? And, and, and how can we learn to control our anger? So I'd like to start with giving you a couple Bible verses. I've, I've got several here, actually. It says, refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it only tends to evil. That's Psalm 37, verse 8. And then Psalm 86, 15. But you, O Lord, are merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. So God gets angry, but he's slow to anger. Proverbs 14, 29, whoever is slow to anger has a great understanding, but he who is hasty temper exalts folly. Now there's more I can go to. A soft answer turns away wrath, a harsh word stirs up anger, a hot tempered man stirs up strife. He who is slow to anger quiets contention and so on. So one of the things that we're hearing about anger is that there's a difference between anger and wrath and being slow to anger versus being quick to anger. If I went through this whole verse, this whole sheet of, of uh, biblical quotes on it, you'd see that they don't talk about not being angry as much as they say be slow to anger and do not be given to anger. So what is anger? I'd like to start with anger is a secondary emotion. Anger is a secondary emotion. What does that mean? Well, if something secondary exists, that means there's something primary. So the first thing I do in my anger management class is I start by telling people, so anger is secondary. It comes out when there's a primary emotion that we feel that we're just uncomfortable with or we can't really identify. For instance, women typically have a better vocabulary and can name their emotions better than males can. Um, yes, there is scientific proof for that. Actually, let me just quick tell you because I know someone will judge me, call me sexist, but the female's verbal center, her emotion center in her brain, her amygdala is wrapped around her verbal center, which means when she feels something, whether it's good, bad, happy, excited, whatever, she can name that emotion in 8.2 milliseconds. The man, however, his amygdala are wrapped around his spinal cord. That means when he feels something, he has to move his body. That's why you see guys, yeah, they get angry, they punch something, or they're always fighting. My grandsons are always trying to knock each other over. So that's a little aside. Maybe I'll do a video just on that a little bit later. But keeping that in mind, because women can connect emotion and verbal uh, skills more easily, they are more likely to be able to name, I feel disrespected, I feel hurt, I feel inadequate, I feel weak. Men typically cannot express that as well. But let's assume they can. There's also this, I don't want to show you that I feel inadequate, that I feel stupid, that I feel weak. As a matter of fact, in my anger management class, the number one emotion that men did not like was weakness. I'd hear again and again and again from young men, old men, officers, enlisted, civilians. I don't want to, I don't want them to think I'm weak. I'm not weak. So anger, a secondary emotion comes out when there's a primary emotion that we don't feel comfortable with. Let's go with road rage. We often have people that drive down the street in perfectly happy mood, doing their own thing, and someone cuts them off and flips them the bird or something. Well, one person might be livid and go after that car, and another person might blow it off. Yeah, whatever. What is at the root of that is what that person who cut you off made you feel. If one person is like, I will not be disrespected, I don't like it, I will not tolerate it, well, they will take to anger 
Now, another person might be thinking, you know, I think it's on that jerk. It's not on me. I don't care. I, I don't feel disrespected. I don't feel unappreciated. I just feel like it's not me. It's on them. So in that case, the anger isn't going to manifest, not outwardly like that. A lot of times, too, I will notice that um, I don't always like to throw around the word abuse because I think we throw that around too much in our society, but I like to go with children. When we were all children, we'd all be able to cry. Oh, I fell down, I hurt myself, boys, girls, my, my, mommy kissed my boo-boo. But there comes an age where it's socially less acceptable for a boy to cry, but a girl can continue to cry. So she falls down, she gets hurt, you know, she can still, oh, I'm sorry, even teenagers, even as adults, it's like, this, this is not a rough day. Everybody, it's okay for a female to cry. But if a male would all of a sudden, you know, be a bank teller and his drawer doesn't balance, I just need to cry because I, I'm just stressed. We'd look at him like, meh. Uh, so what men will tend to do is when they feel that emotion, they will stifle it. They will hold it in. They will change it somehow. I, I don't feel anything. I'm fine. I'm fine. But see, that primary emotion is still there. They're still feeling whatever it was that caused them to feel that way. But when you stuff in an emotion and you keep it in, you keep it in. and No, I'm fine. Didn't bother me. Didn't bother me at all. But it did. The emotion doesn't go away. Just your expression of it changes. If we are able to express our emotions verbally, kind of get them out like steam out of a teapot, our anger expression will tend to stay, to, to be muted, to go down. But when we can't keep that anger in, it'll just build up and build up and build up and then one day explode. So the key to managing our anger is first being able to name it. And I'll say to my students, I'll say to my couples, when you feel angry, when you felt angry at your spouse for saying or doing such and such, what was your primary emotion? What were you feeling? What were you thinking? And it takes some effort because a lot of times we're like, mm -hmm. so sometimes I, I actually have a sheet of paper with lots of emotions on it and I'll read some of them to them. Did you feel disrespected? Did you feel hurt? Did you feel untrusted? Did you feel distrusted? Did you feel um, whatever the emotion is? When that person could go, yes, that's what it was. I felt unappreciated. Then we can start healing curing ourselves, figuring out the problem, and then we can go towards the solution. So I don't want you to stifle your anger. I just want you to consider your anger expression. Like I am very angry right now, actually a lot of times, at what's going on in our society. I am angry at what people did to us during the pandemic. I'm angry at the lies our leaders and our media are telling. But I don't walk around beating people up. I don't walk around screaming about it. I just say, no, I'm angry. And that's where you need to get. So that you can say, yeah, that situation may be angry. That person may be angry because they said or did this. Then you can start looking at the Lord's words and applying them. Ephesians 4.26 be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. That is probably the most commonly repeated one. But God right there is saying, be angry. It is okay. But what he's saying is don't let the sun go down on it. Don't, don't keep it in and, and not process it. A lot of times couples will have fights at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. And I'm like, and they're, they're trying to resolve the issue before they go to bed because they don't want the anger. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Sometimes going to bed saying, you know what? I don't want to externalize this anger. I am angry. But let's just go to bed so that we can be level-headed, calm, think clearly because we do stupid things when we're tired. And let's talk about it again in the morning. So that's very different. That, that also is not letting the sun set down on your anger. You're able to say, son, you can set. I'm not angry, or I am angry, but I'm able to process it. I'm just logically thinking through when will be the best time. 
Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with malice. So in that context, anger is when it's bubbling up as these things that are unproductive. James 1.19, know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Again, we're allowed to get angry. But what I'm asking you to do is to learn to contemplate that which is causing your anger. And then if you do that, you will be slower to anger. It's not easy to do. I usually teach it as a six week course. It takes people time to ingest this. I know it's not gonna be easy for you to change in one video. Some people might call you an angry person. Some of you are just hot headed right away. Some of you just keep it and 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 until it blows up. Maybe you're angry too. I'm going to do another video about stuffers on escalators, which is basically how we tend to handle our anger. But for now, your homework assignment is just to identify what is the cause of your anger, i.e. what is your primary emotion. So the next time you get angry, whether it's on the road or with a family member or at work, when you walk out of the situation and can shake it off, I want you to just question yourself, self, what was my primary emotion? What was I feeling? And when you can do that, you know you're on your way. You know where to find me, breakfastwithbacon.com. I'd love to help you. These things don't happen in a vacuum. And no man is an island unto himself. So let's do it together. God doesn't expect you to be perfect. Neither do I. So God bless you. Have a great day. And don't kick yourself. It's okay if you get angry.